Welcome to Kickoff Countdown, back with Mike Leach, the mouth of the South, Ontario, from 680 News, and with Oliver Platt, one soccer journalist and one soccer analyst. I'm Kurt Larson. Guys, spring season all wrapped up now. Calvary takes down York 9-2-0 at York Lions Stadium. Um, just why were they so dominant this year? I mean, one loss on the season, could finish 9-1 or no if they go to Vancouver Island uh, on, on Canada Day and get a result there. Why were they so dominant, Mike? Well, first and foremost, congratulations to Cavalry for, for becoming the first spring season winners of uh, the Canadian Premier League. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For me, yeah. It's, it's organizing. <laughs> it all boils down to organization. They are clearly the most organized team. They made very few mistakes throughout the course yeah. of the season. Tommy Wielden Jr.'s system really worked. And uh, yeah, they, they, to me, it's almost like a robotic unit. Like what, you're, what you see throughout the course of a game, throughout the course of the spring season, it really hasn't deviated a whole lot. That is one thing we said on Match Day Live uh, during, that, during, that, during that post game is that they never beat themselves, right, Ollie? So what was the key to them being so dominant in the spring season? Nobody could touch them. Forge gets one result against them, but really yeah. nobody could touch them. I, I think for me the key was that they didn't stand still. They kept getting better. You know, I think if you're good at one thing or you have one way of playing, teams will eventually figure you out. But I think the cavalry we saw in week one, game one, is a different team to the one we saw uh, on Wednesday that sealed the spring championship and I think the way they evolved and continued to throw different things it seems for me you know just kept teams guessing and then kept them on the front foot really. Should we highlight their defending? I mean four goals conceded yeah. through the spring season uh, I believe they played in eight one goal games including all competitions so they're winning close games nobody's scoring against them ha credit has to go to, to Jay Wilden at the back Dominic Zator uh, Trafford comes back I mean the defense played a, a massive role yeah you can just tell when the team's well organized by the way different players come in and fit in seamlessly you know they're different players at the fullback or wingback positions the sense backs rotated once Mason Trafford got fit and you know, none of them missed a beat. They're, they all looked as comfortable as each other, really. In the Plenty of players to choose from on that, that Calvary roster, both on the bench and in the starting lineup. Uh, if you had to pick one player that Tommy Wilden Jr. just can't afford to lose uh, at this point in the season uh, or moving forward into the fall, who's that one player that just made the difference every time you saw them? This is a really tough question to answer because as a group, they've done so well. We, we've talked about in the past, there are really no superstars on this team. For me, if I've got to boil it down to one, it's Dominic Zator. I think there, you, you mentioned, mentioned it. Four, defense, goals, yeah. four goals conceded through the spring season. That's, like, that's unbelievable. And defense wins championships. It's, it's true in, in all sports. It's true in this sport as well. You defend well, you're going to win a lot of games. I think you could choose just about four center backs from that group and probably, you know, agree with all of them for being an important player. Yeah. Who for you, though, is the most important piece right now that Tommy Wilden Jr. can't lose from that Calvary side? Well, I, I think they've got depth at center back and they've got depth up front, so I'm going to go with Elijah Adekubi. Um I think he's the one guy they have who can really take the ball in midfield to keep things ticking, spreads it wide. They have Nick Ledgerwood on the bench. Yeah, but it, I think, you know... Injured, coming back from injury, yeah. Yeah, Adekubi just brings a bit more kind of ball-playing quality, I think, than any of their other midfielders. You know, Waterman's come in and kind of done Ledgerwood's job, yeah. Boucher as well. Um, but Adekubi just has that... He, he's the brain of the team, I think, in the middle of the park. I think that speaks to something, is they, they had the interchangeable parts, and that's... Mm -hmm. It's part of yeah. the organization, what Tommy Wielden Jr. has done there. Interesting you say Waterman. Interesting you say interchangeable parts, because my guy is Joel Waterman. Mm -hmm. Not a starter every day, but he just plays in so many different positions, and he's come on to kill off games. He's made the difference in a number of matches where maybe, uh, you know, at Edmonton. Uh, Edmonton's dominating that match. He comes into midfield, solidifies things. He could go into center back if they need him to. So I think in a long season, especially in a fall when it's getting closer to a CPL championship, a guy like Joel Waterman, who can play a lot of different spots, is pretty, is pretty valuable. Just contemplating what Tommy Wilden Jr. has done this season, what could this mean for a coach like him, a young coach, first professional job, or other people out there watching what he's done in the CPL? You'd hope so. Like, I, I think as much as we talk about this league developing Canadian players, I think we should also want it to, to develop coaches, right? You know, we, we want to have a stronger base, you know, to choose the next national team coach whenever that happens, um, you know, from our domestic league, as well as from MLS and, and wherever Canadian coaches are. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, giving young coaches an opportunity to show what they can do should be a massive part of what this yeah, league is Tommy, about. He's, he's had other opportunities to go coach in the USL in the United States, uh, passed on it to, to coach in the CPL. Uh, would you be surprised if someone came calling for Tommy Wilden Jr.? 
At this point, maybe because the body of work is still really small, yeah. I want to see over the course of an entire season what he can do with that team. And then at that point, if they are continuing to roll, certainly he's going to open some eyes uh, around certainly North America with the USL, MLS, maybe even in Europe as well. Because I do believe that people are paying attention to this league. And, and it comes back to, as you said, the CPL is all about developing players, but also yeah. coaches as well. I think the season's going to make it a lot easier for him to attract players there. I think the way he's carried himself, obviously the wins, people want to be part of a winning culture. Uh, every interview he does, he, he's top class. I think it just me, might, might be easier to attract players to, to, mm -hmm. to Calgary.